going to start approaching this boil, hold that line. Just nice, calm strokes, good thoughtful strokes. Hold that line to the boil line, fight the spin, fight the spin. You're good, hard left, hard left, hard right, hard right, hard right, hard right. Charge, charge, left turn, left turn, you're good, you're good. charge, charge. So one side of me is very sad because I'm leaving my family, I'm leaving my wife, my kids, but I'm also ready to go because I've been training for a long time. I've been kayaking for six years. I mean, it's time to go. Sure about this? Has anyone told you your shirt's inside out? No, I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, we, we can put the boat up first and then you can No, I can't. All right. <laughs> I first met Eric on a trip. We had a bunch of blind and sighted youth uh, kids that were kind of coming down on their adventure and Eric was kind of the mentor of that group. Um, and throughout the trip, you know, we thought it would be fun to just get in a ducky and play around. So I started tooting a whistle for Eric and he'd follow me through and, and we had a lot of fun. It was great. and. Uh, you know, it's like, this is cool. And I remember floating one point downstream with Eric after a rapid, just side by side, you know, and chatting. And the idea came up like, man, we should, we should come kayak the whole Grand Canyon sometime. And, and, um, and that sounded like a great idea. All right. It's actually happening, you guys. Woo! We're going on a river trip. Yeah. Thank you. I know. It's hard to believe. Um, so you guys, I just wanted to kind of the Grand Canyon is Harlan's home, so he feels so comfortable in this environment. And it's really cool to see somebody like that. In a way, he's like a, like a river Yoda. And you guys, we can, let's uh, haul our boats down a little bit and we can spread out a little bit. Here you go, bud. I'll take you over to your boat. Thanks. I'll let you get naked and then I'll come back. Grab your paddle. Alright. And we we'll want to flip this around. So you're at the front. So I'll have you spin. Keep going. A little bit further. Do you want me to lead? Sure. Alright. I mean, just, I mean, you got the bow. A small left. Okay. I see. You don't want to go. Okay. It's up to you, bro. Uh, Eric, why don't you go left? Left a little further? Yeah. And then down the water. Perfect. Got the water's in. Hey, Eric. I've got your uh, helmet here. Now, is this the one with the new. Oh, guess what? There's no headset. Oh, no, here it is. Yeah, there's a Talk to me. Yeah. So, okay, Eric, did you guys figure out the, uh, the helmets? Yeah. 
Yeah, is yours attached? Yep, I'm attached. I'm going to get dressed and we can check the sign on and see how it works. Tyler always wears a collared shirt underneath his dry jacket. You always wear a collared shirt to the office, don't you? How are you feeling? Really good, man. I feel great. Been running around. Yeah, it's good. Nice. This, is, this is, you know, the nice thing about this right now, though, is we shove off the gear and then we're kayakers. This is what we do, right? Yeah. We're in our element. Uh, this is what we've been training for. The Grand Canyon whitewater is very unique because of its sheer volume. You get these massive hydraulics, you get boils, whirlpools. The Colorado River running through the Grand Canyon is known for big, iconic rapids. rapids are spaced out intermittently and in between them are these long calm sections, these long pools. The biggest of all of these rapids is Lava Falls. A lot of people get offline and they make big mistakes in lava because you can't really see where you're going. It's a lot of anticipation leading up to each rapid. Hearing Harlan's voice, it, it goes beyond just information. Like this soothing voice is there that's saying, I'm right here next to you. There you go, nice easy board strokes. Nothing too hard right here. The beginning rapids are less intimidating. The Grand Canyon has this nice build towards these massive rapids in the inner gorge. We're doing good, we're lined up perfectly. So we're gonna be entering the tongue here. Next forward paddles now. See that line, we're kinda of coming into some bigger waves. I've mapped this place, I know each day. I know where the big rapids are, I've studied them horn and granite and hermit leading all the way up to the granddaddy of them all, which is lava. And even though I've just started, lava's never out of my mind. It's always there at the edge. I got invited to this recreational program. And my dad would drive me like three hours up to this program. And once a month, they would take us out doing different sports. They'd take us canoeing and sailing and tandem biking. And one weekend, they took us rock climbing. And I was climbing up this beautiful granite face. And I couldn't see the rock, but I could use my hands and my feet as my eyes. And I could feel all the little like patterns, all the little features in the rock. And it, it, was, it was so wild because it was like sort of connecting the dots, like this, this sort of puzzle that I couldn't see, but I could, I could sort of figure out 
how to decipher it with my hands. It, it was just full on engagement. And I got to the top of that rock face and I just remember thinking that this was the opposite of what I thought blindness would be like. It was probably in my late 20s that I started thinking about Everest. It's not like in the movies where like you go climbing the first time and then you're like, oh, I'm gonna stand on the top of Everest someday. You know, it's, it's a long process. When I got to Everest, I felt in over my head most of the time. Like that. And some guy, this dude Sandy came in today. He didn't know I was in the tent. He didn't know I was sitting right here. And he goes, Well, you guys are going to have a hell of a time getting the blind guy up there. You guys have your work cut out for you. Uh, What'd that make you feel like, Eric? That's it. Um, Half of me thought, oh shit, must be really hard. The other half of me said, I'm gonna prove him wrong. That's the spirit. <laughs> We're gonna do it, Eric. All right. It's in. I needed to kind of really force myself to believe that this thing was possible. What's up, buddy? You did it. You did it. Everybody around. Okay. Dude, how's it feel? I feel good now. So I'm on that high. Congratulations, huh? Thank you. When one of my teammates pulls me aside and he said, Hey Eric, do me a favor. Don't let this mountain be the greatest thing you ever do. What else is there? Like, where do I go from here? It's plenty deep. Okay. Let me have your hand. All right. And I want you to go all the way, as far as you can, and then snap up. How's that feel? Cold. <laughs> go One, two, three. Eric asked me to teach him how to roll, and I had no idea it was going to lead to other things. Um, started kayaking rivers. Start paddling forward. We're going to do an eddy peel out. Good, good. Stay with it. Nope, not yet. A little further, and eddy peel out. We're going to do the rooster tail this time. Paddle forward, small right, left, small left, sorry. Good. Hold that line, hold that line. Small right. Charge! When you flip over in your kayak, your basic instinct is just to pull that spray skirt and swim for your life. You gotta try to roll. You're way safer inside your boat than you are out of your boat. But when I would flip over, I would just panic. How come I started having unsettled stomach problems as soon as it seemed to coincide when I started learning to kayak? Like 
When I started thinking about kayaking, I was almost 40 years old. Everything, rivers were just so different from mountains. I thought, this is a really vulnerable spot where you're like actually trying to embark on something brand new. And I don't know if I have it in me. I remember standing on the river that first time, listening to the rapids, thinking, I climbed Mount Everest, so why am I so fucking scared? Slide, slide, slide. Sometimes I don't know why I stick with this. Partly it's because of my friends. They're not seeing this like little blind guy squirming in the corner. They're seeing something else and I and I want to be that thing they see. There were days I was learning, you know, in a thousand hours of preparation. When I was flailing and bleeding and slamming into rocks and swimming through these rapids, I, I think it fed my ego to be the only blind kayaker out of seven billion people on Earth. Then I learned about Lonnie. On me. 
long as I can roll up as many times as I roll down, I'm golden. <laughs> 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 Chris and Seth I met this summer for the first time. I don't know how they stay with me when I screw up, but they do. Sometimes I think I've pushed them a little bit out of their comfort zone on trying a few things, but uh, so far it's worked. I mean, bluntly, kayaking is a dangerous sport. They're, you know, for anyone who can see, there's things that can suck you down and hold you there until you, you drown. You can smash into rocks. You can get flipped over and smash your head against an underwater rock. You could get knocked out and be floating down the river unconscious. And then all that stuff is just multiplied when you can't see any of it coming. I've slammed into some walls and things like that, so I, I don't really like to do that, so yeah. <laughs> you don't like to go careening into rock walls? I've slammed into a few walls, yeah. I, just, I dented my helmet, you know. And it's like, I'm, it's almost good that you don't know it's coming, you know? Oh, then I don't you just know. like bounce off and, yeah. and roll over and then hopefully roll back up, but. Hey, Eric, where are you at, man? <laughs> I'm right here. High, high five, Patterson, talk to him. All right, hold on. Here we come, I'm coming. Talk, 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 One more time. Woo! One, two, three. Uh-oh, lower, lower. Lower, lower, okay, hold on, hold on. One, two, three. Oh, I didn't get close to you. I gotta get close. Let me turn back. One, two, three. There you are. That's lame. Hold on. Once I got over the shock of not being the only blind kayaker in the world, I thought I really liked this guy. And so I invited him on the expedition. You never know what to believe with Lonnie when he told us that he had gone blind in a hunting accident. He said he was hunting with Dick Cheney. And it turned out that was actually true, except the Dick Cheney part. His friend heard a noise, they were in thick bushes. He whirled around and shot him Lonnie still has lead pellets all on his skin. I've, I've actually felt the pellets under there. I used to make money cutting firewood for people and, uh, and you know, cutting wood around home and everything else. Uh. So it's nice to be able to feel comfortable coming out here and just doing stuff I used to do. Like I said, I'm not near as fast, the links aren't right, the, the angles, but still, it, you know, I can do it. I was out at uh, the Disabled American Veterans Winter Sports Clinic, and the organization, Team River Runner, had kayaks out there in the pool. So I was like, this, this is cool, you know? And, uh, they called me up and asked me if I wanted to do the whitewater in a raft. I said, no. I said, that would scare me to death. You know, and they're like, uh, well, you can't do it in a kayak because you you got to do at least a thousand rolls and you uh, have to have more experience. I'm like, uh, okay, well, he didn't know I had my kayak here on this porch. So I thought, all right. So I took my kayak and I drove it down to my pond down there the next day. Practice those babies. When I first started, you know, I was just learning. I kind of picked it up. Oh, I did 100 rolls the next day. God, it's gigantic. It's almost like it doesn't seem right. That's open. There's an open. It opens open, up somewhere open there. Open off to the left. Here, yeah. take my finger. Yeah. It opens somewhere there, maybe. Right, I mean, right, I don't yeah, know. That's kind of what I'm thinking because I hear yeah. people talking. Right. And then it's naturally definitely open in front of me. And then. Yeah. I don't know how far to my right. Well, how far to my right do you think it is? It's closed. Um, seems like it's closed all the way to like. I want to feel where you're at. 
seems like it's closed maybe all the way to like there. Now see, to me, I would think, yeah, I don't know, yeah. But, yeah, I don't know, somewhere like some, that. Yeah. I don't know if we're right or not. <laughs> Lonnie and I started kayaking separately, so we were developing our systems completely in an isolated way. I have a guide in front of me giving me voice commands of left and right, simple commands, and we just go by voice. So as we're coming in down the tongue, we're going to be making an angle from the left to the right. We're going okay. to be ferrying to the right. And then just above the rock, above the big rock in the middle of the river, we're going to just kind of cut to the right. John. Cut to the right? John. Yeah. Sounds good. Sound like playing? Let me know when you're ready. Let me hear you uh, give some commands. I don't really hear you too well. I was talking, I had the mic a little ways away from my mouth too. So left turn, left turn, hard right, hard right, hard right. Charge, charge, charge. Yeah, it'll get worse again. Yeah? Distance, there was nothing. Five feet of distance, it was super loud. It was more like. Oh, maybe something. There we go. You got it? Cool. It's not oh loud. Oh, God, though. But I can't hear it. Is it pretty faint? It's terrible. So you're messing with Harlan's? Correct. Yeah. yeah, so we'll take this out and replace it with one that we think works, but we don't know for sure. Yeah. Okay, so that's the speaker. So that only put that on, Scott. label is bad. Um, bad I'm in a bad microphone. Yeah, there you go. Oh my gosh. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's loud. One thing about the Grand Canyon is that it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Every day you're experiencing bigger and bigger rapids. Every day you're waking up and you put on wet gear and getting in your kayak and you know, every day has a map of a bunch of hard rapids that you have to get through. And day after day it's pretty exhausting. Only a small percentage of the time is actually running these chaotic whitewater rapids. Each rapid might last 30 seconds, maybe a minute long. The times in between we're paddling from rapid to rapid are these long, calm stretches. I like drifting down the river. It's a time for me to listen to the canyon walls and bring in a lot more information into my mind. You know, like I can hear the little pour overs and the rocks. I can feel the sun and shade lines in the canyon at the different times of day. I love the peaceful times on the river. I think I like them actually better than the rapids. That's an adrenaline rush. Yeah. <laughs> At least something in this river can get you. 
I'm gonna drown that little sucker out of here. I think he's still in my boat. We never saw him floating. And he got me too. The inside of my leg is totally numb. Uh, the one I got scorped by, Scorpio. my butt was a quarter that's like a tiny little guy. Fair warning, guys. Check your boats for scorpions. Check everything. Here we go. Okay, because Harlan had to jump out of his kayak because the scorpion was about to bite his inner thigh and other nether worlds. It's time for what, fellas? Booty beer! Yeah! Yeah, get that in there. Yeah! Oh, drink, 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 drink! Good job! Yeah! Give it up for him, guys! Booty bears! Oh, that's excellent! All right! When I was four years old, I was diagnosed with this really rare eye disease, retinoschisis. And my brain just went into denial. I just wanted to be a kid. I had people that I loved who said, hey, it's going to be OK. And I appreciated that. I loved that support. But nobody knew, really. It doesn't matter how many people have said, get ready for this, it's happening. Like, I was not ready. It felt like I was, like I'd gotten hit in the head with a sledgehammer. A week before my freshman year in high school, I lost the last traces of vision. And I wasn't like a little bit seeing impaired. I was blind as a bat. Like, I could not see to take a step. I was born into this really great family. My dad's a Marine pilot aviator, just really tough, really disciplined. I have a, a placard. I send it to sons and daughters when I think they could use it, but it's when things go wrong, as they sometimes will, and the road you're trudging seems all uphill, and the funds are low, and the debts are high, and you want to sigh, but you have to cry. When care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. My mom was really loving, really soft, almost fragile in a way. His mom, she was the one that went into schools and absolutely demanded that he be schooled like a, a normal kid. So she was a real tiger, lioness. I remember listening to my brothers out there playing basketball as I was going blind and just really wanting to be a part of that and really sort of angry because, you know, what was I going to do? I couldn't catch a baseball or anything. And one of the things I heard that a blind person could do was to wrestle. And so one day after school, I found myself tapping my cane down the hallway towards that stinky, musty wrestling room and just signing up. And, uh, and that first day, the captain of the team slammed my head against the mat so hard, just like every other kid, and I loved it. But this was my family. Come on, Eric! After I went blind, I felt like I was stuck in this prison. It was scary being inside, and it was also scary trying to get out of it.
Cool. How you guys feeling? Ah, it's kind of like business. Business. Business yeah. moment. Yeah. Focus. Perhaps. Focus. I like focus. I think that's a good word. Downstream, you guys, we have Horn Creek Rapid. It's actually the steepest rapid in the Grand Canyon. All right. So one of my I can hear it. One of my yeah. favorites down here in the Grand Canyon. Um, but yeah, then you know, just just be loose, be thoughtful in your strokes and calm. And Are we going to jump in? Do you want us to jump into that eddy down below, or do you want us to? Uh, you know, we'll probably eddy out there, and then once everybody's through, we can peel off and celebrate. And we're all going to just grease our lines, you know. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Thanks, man. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Lonnie. Yep. See you, man. All right. Okay. And that's you. Cool. Any questions about it? No, man. Well, that sounds good. Okay. I'm feeling so good. So the first, uh, when you angle in, yep. the first will, will probably be left, right? Yep. So we're going to be we're gonna yeah. be running right to left. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and right. there's actually, that there, there'll be a lateral. So on that left, we're going to be kind of squaring up to a lateral yeah. coming off the right horn. So there'll be a one hit there. And then we'll have a little bit of slack water, so we'll push through that. And, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. One of the life tragedies that you face, uh, Eric was at wrestling camp and his mom was in a car accident. I walked onto the edge of the mat and he knew that it was his dad and uh, he said, Dad, Dad, where are you? He said, you know, the tournament's not until Saturday. And then I had to tell him that his uh, mom had died. So that was uh, that was a huge blow to him. Losing my mom was the ch definition of pain, like so painful uh, that you know you, you wonder how your body goes forward, how your heart keeps ticking. Not long after that, he went totally. Uh, uh, blindness at the same time, blindness and losing your mom. 
and I've thought many times about the fact that that would uh, destroy many people, right? Never, I uh, never figured out why it didn't destroy him. The way people react to bad things is that they shut down and they build a lot of crust around themselves. And I, I'm the first person who does that. And yet something keeps nagging at me, telling me that that's, you know, to build up that crust is the exact wrong thing to do. Lay it open. And that's where, like, that's where the great stuff happens in your life. The river isn't really alive, but it has a strong character. Some rapids are big and friendly in big waves, and some are really violent, like going into a boxing match. You just get stomped. So it's uh, easy to think about the canyon and the rapids as sort of having life and energy. Each rapid, you want to do well, you know, you want to, you want to squeak through the gauntlet. but now I hear something below. It's hard to know exactly what it is. And so it just like gets that little tingle in your belly and you're like, okay, what is that ahead? There's a, always that potential chance that the river takes me away or washes me one direction and him the other direction, or I flip upside down. And that, and that is a very stark reality. Never before have I felt so adamant that I have to be upright. I have to be upright and be you know, aware of what's going on. him and being involved in this project the most was not necessarily kayaking the Grand Canyon with a blind guy, but we were both given uncertainties at a young age. It's definitely interesting that several of my pivotal moments in life have happened with water. My mom had been taking us on river trips since I was probably three years old. Yeah, here's just a bunch of old random photos. This is my first waterfall I ever dropped in my kayak. Up in Oregon, middle of winter time, freezing cold. So this is me probably when I was three or four. And then this is my sister Marika. And uh, my dad, his name is Garen. His name was Garen. He died when I was seven. He was 41, I believe. So he was probably my age. After my dad died, I got really quiet and didn't say much for a couple years. I think I lost myself in a way. I, I didn't process the grieving or the loss at all. Finding my dad dead in a bathtub with water spraying on his face, not being able to pull him out of the water. I remember just feeling totally fucking helpless, you know? Big, 250 pound sack of muscle and guy laying in a bathtub and not being able to really know what to do. 
But I think that is something that I carried on with me for quite a while. There's the a part of you that you know, wants to live and survive and continue on, but I, I think for some reason my relationship with water has always felt um, like it's okay. I'm haunted by water. You know, I'd always thought of Harlan as indestructible. You know, he's like a superhero. But I don't think you can ever really truly see a person, you know, see past that armor to this kid that's just sitting there helpless and shattered and speechless, you know, feeling the weight of that water on his soul. It's not lost on me that after his dad died, he had to find his own way out of that deep well of despair just to find that voice again. And that's the voice that's carrying us down the river. Break down things like lava, and you realize it's two minutes. It's two minutes, and I can handle two minutes. I'm really trying to block that out of my mind right now because that's several days away, and I'm not just going to sit and harp on it. It's a miserable sort of way to do it. It's not healthy for my brain. Like the Kumbu Icefall, this 2,000 foot jumbled up section of boulders of ice of like every size imaginable. I remember feeling panicked, you know, just like I'm, I'm gonna be trapped in this landscape forever. <laughs> it, and so it was after getting beat up by the Icefall many times that I realized that I was kind of going through the motions, that I wasn't really believing that I could stand on top. I can't hear you. What? Stand up. Stand up. It's so hard to be fully in the moment when you're on that mountain because there's so much fear, there's so much anxiety, and all that stuff becomes like a layer between you and the mountain. Harlan has this really deep affinity to the river. He experiences the river in such an honest way, and I want to experience it that way too. I keep feeling like I'm letting myself down somehow because I'm not in the state that Harlan is in. It's like a person looking through a window at an experience rather than being in the experience. I slept till like maybe 2.30 and then just couldn't fall asleep. Just lay there listening to the to Neville rap it out there. It's kind of loud. <laughs> so I'm getting ready to run through this little rapid here. Uh, I'm gonna try it solo. The only thing I'm gonna want from these guys is uh, to tell me going in if you know I split the sound of the big roar or if I keep it off to one side or the other going in. And then I'm just going to try to feel the waves and see if I can roll right down through. Tell me about that run. How was that? <laughs> it was Independence, man. Uh-huh. You know, and uh, uh, I, I don't know. I know you know the feeling of... Uh, 
Well, that's one of the harder things of not being able to see is, is uh, losing that freedom and total independence. And that's a, just a small moment of just, it's yeah. just, it's just it, you know? Just going down by yeah. feel. That's yeah. super cool. Yeah. So. Huh. Uh, nice. Yeah. Well, yeah. good job. Yeah. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Ooh, and you're t-shirting it, too. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Seth, what is it? Sun's out, guns out, kind of stuff, man. <laughs> yeah, thanks, bud. Hold on a second, though. You yeah, gotta go. I got you. Got you. You gotta go. Oh. Gotta go. Oh yeah, gotta roll them, huh? <laughs> All right, now yeah. you're now you're better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I ain't got the guns you got. So you know, there you go. You know, but you got the guns out. I, I got the chicken wings. So. <laughs> <laughs> I got them. There's a rapid called Upset, and it's a, kind of a big one. And uh, some people say it's fun. <laughs> I hope that's the case. <laughs> hey, Hart. Thank you. Eating your porridge? Yeah. I'm gonna get some porridge. Yeah, porridge is good breakfast because it goes down easy. <laughs> When your tummy's upset above upset? Yeah. <laughs> Sausage before upset. It's just not not flying. No. <laughs> well, how about this? I'll Big put, meaty sausage. I'll, I'll put some in your pants for later. You can have it after upset. Thanks. I'll slide them in my pocket. You can have some pocket meat. I mean, I can hear some loud waves right down there. Um, I think maybe that's on the right side, right, Harlan? We'll maybe yeah. miss that stuff, yeah. that loud noise there. Some little pour overs, yeah. yeah. And so just like we were talking about, you know, you pointed out you heard something over there, so we're gonna stay off the wall. Yeah. But we also kind of want to be moving almost towards the wall to get away from that. There's a hole at the yeah. bottom. Nice, on me, on me, on me, on me, on me, doing it like you're doing it like what you, we talk about it's our little mantra above the rapid right like be clear calm and precise in your action and be at peace in where you are in the moment and then at, at that moment that just allows you to let everything else go you know and I think seeing you harness that I mean I, I it freaking brings tears to my eyes because it's amazing 
you know, it's like that I think is you reaching this next level of the sport. That's something that I've had to learn to harness. Now I get to share it with you and seeing that you're you're letting it in is really cool. I heaped several times this morning. What I think about it. <laughs> yeah. You said you didn't didn't eat, so have you ate yet? You know, I think a lot about lava. It's starting to weigh a lot in my mind and consume a lot of space in my mind. And I can get sort of down and thinking about, oh, you know, so many things could go wrong. But then I think, gosh, oh, it's just another rapid, you know. It's, I gotta just execute and do what I've done in the past. So as we're coming into green water, uh, we're going to meet what I call the slick, and it's kind of right where the eddy line meets, mm -hmm. and we're just going to kind of hug that eddy line. We're not going to, it's not going to mess with us too much because we're going to be pointed kind of right downstream. Um, pointed right down. Uh -huh. Pretty much. And then when we kind of start getting closer to the rapid, um, there's some boils that kind of start to form, and the boils are going to feel like it's kind of surfing us one way or the other. Did the two entry waves knock you over? Uh, no, no. Two entry waves you'll be fine on. Right. Um, if it does tip you, just, you know, again, nice and calm in the moment. Just be where you are, focus on nothing else but just setting up for that roll. Nail your roll and then be listening for commands and we'll get, we'll get through those tail waves. Cool. And then it'll be done. All right. Good. Just find that feeling, remember that feeling, just harnessing everything, nice calm breaths. Bring everything to right here, right now. We're in the moment. Nothing else matters. The kayaking. Clear, calm, precise thoughts, action. Whenever you're ready, buddy. We'll just take some forward strokes out of the current. Speak up. 
Cruxiest places you can roll up in this river is at the top of Lava Falls. You wanted to see me swim, didn't you? You get the idea that you start out on this big journey and you commit to it. You surround yourself with this amazing team and you push forward and then reality crashes in and you're swimming through lava like a drowned rat. I don't know, you know, you, you just, you know, you just keep getting flipped and it starts to kind of uh, mess with you, you know what I mean? So you're like wondering if you're like offline or something like that. Yeah. And then I just couldn't breathe. Yeah. I, I pulled, and then literally I pulled, and I was through it. Yep. Yeah. I was through it. There was yeah. nothing, nothing left. Blind five. Ready? Blind five. 
There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, Alright, I should we get were... my booty beer over with here. I pour fast. Booty! No, 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 no. no. Wait. It's got to go in first. In, What's got to go in first? Yeah, we pour the beer in. Yeah, yeah, pour yeah, the, yeah. the beer yeah. in. Yeah, I got the beer. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too much of the whiskey. Not too much of the whiskey. And there is a little whiskey going Okay, there you go. A little, little skim of whiskey. There it is. And then down it. Oh, drink, 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 drink. Nice work. Yeah. 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 Spill a drop. You'll never swim again. <laughs> Probably not supposed to say this, but I honestly, I hate it when people tell me anything is possible. You know, barriers, they're not like imagined, they're not perceived, they're real. They're real things with real substance and they actually hurt a lot. Part of me wants to keep on going and just never look back at this thing ever again. Maybe I just go back and I and I and I finish this circle. I I finish this thing and I do it fully, not like with just giving into myself. If I have another another disaster and I swim through lava, I can live with that as long as I. I did the thing fully. Eric pulled me aside. You know, he didn't successfully run lava, he swam lava. And he pulled me aside and he asked me, what would be the possibility if I wanted to run lava again? We're gonna be paddling upstream for quite a while, you know, up to uh, the Black Rock, and then we'll make the ferry across. I said, well, if we do this, who do you think should come with us? And I said, I said, your team. I said, your team, all of us. We'll go up, we'll hike up, and we'll go do it again. When care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Just take a deep breath and clear everything. Just be here in the moment and feeling the river.
Thanks, Arlen. Yeah, buddy. Come here, man. <laughs> Thanks for letting us be here with you, buddy. Thanks, Rob. Welcome, bud. Good job, buddy. Thanks for letting us be here with you. Don't have to go back, though. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah, buddy. Good job, man. <laughs> High intensity lava falls. That's high intensity. <laughs> I didn't really want to, like, part of me didn't really want to come back and do it, but I just felt like I, I needed to, and then I sort of tossed and turned last night listening to Son of Lava, thinking, like, should I do it? I tell my kids it's the open heart policy. Just trust and and uh, give it a whirl. I don't want to understand love. I want to feel it. I, I don't want to understand trust, I want to feel it. I want to be exposed to things, hard things, easy things, beautiful things, the kind of trust that you have with somebody like Harlan or Rob. I think being exposed to that is what enables you to feel it. And it's something I think I've struggled with a lot of my life. This experience was this chance to live. This is the geographical <laughs> end of the Grand Canyon, so you guys are here, man. You did it. Well, I'm proud of you, Lonnie. Good job. Dude, buddy. It's dude. Yeah, it's awesome, man. Harlan, great guiding, too. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you for letting me be a part of it. And six years ago, long time, but I remember when I first came down here and scouted lava, and I remember thinking, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> so we're through it. We did it. Yeah. You know, I, just, uh, I got some. can't imagine doing it with someone I have any more respect for. Good job, you guys. It's all right. Hold that line. About 10 feet from the beach, buddy. Small left, and there's the beach. <laughs> the beach. Aw. Oh, like a one foot step up right down here. Nice. Really flat on top of the Hey, Daddy. Hey, little buddy. What? <laughs> Seventy-eight miles. <laughs> <laughs>